Hi everyone and welcome back to the 300 bird challenge where we're trying to see 300 different bird species before the end of 2024. In this episode, episode two, I'll tell you shortly about our plans for the weekend. We have a bit of time today and some time tomorrow. And I'll also tell you about a setback that we faced last week, which is why we didn't have a video out last week. I'll explain more about that in a second, back after this. Okay, we're back. Sarah, do you want to tell people where we are today? Colonel Sam Smith. Unfortunately, yes, we are back in the same place again. But there is good reason for it, Sarah. What are we looking for today? A female king eider. Yep, a female king eider duck has been spotted here for the last few days. We're hoping to find it now. We did come looking for it last week, but unfortunately, that big setback that I was talking about in the intro, my super telephoto lens unfortunately broke last week. It's been an upsetting time where I haven't been able to do a video. It's why we didn't have anything for you last week, and it's also been quite an expensive replacement. But we are back, and we're glad about that. Um, we did film some birds last week that are new to us, so I'm going to cut to that footage. Before I do that, I just want to give a shout out to Kylo. We ran into him last week while we were a little bit frustrated and upset and kind of dragging ourselves back home with less footage than we would have liked. Kylo cheered us up a little bit. Young guy out birding with his dad, teaching his dad a few things about the birds that they were going to see there. So thanks for watching Kylo and thanks for cheering us up. Anyway guys, we'll be back in a second. Cut to that footage and talk about some of the birds we saw last week. We arrived at Colonel Samuel Smith Park on a wintry, very snowy January the 7th. We quickly spotted our first new bird of the week. Up in some bear trees we saw this hermit thrush. Out on the marina we noticed these three hooded megansers, two female and one non-breeding male. You can spot the non-breeding male by the bright yellow eye. We also saw some scorp. Now, in the last video we saw greater scorp. The advice I've received on this one is that it's probably a lesser scorp, so I'm counting it, but let me know if you disagree in the comments. Shout out to this beaver that made an appearance, unfazed by the cold weather thanks to his luxurious pelt. And unfortunately, it was around this point that my stupid lens broke. Essentially, some internal components have come loose and it's jammed the lens in such a way that it can't zoom in and out anymore. I can probably get it repaired, but it will take a while, and I want to keep making these videos for my own enjoyment and hopefully for yours too. We decided to leave, but before we did, there was a great black-backed gull on one of the docks. I couldn't get a close view of it with my lens not working, but here's the footage I managed before we went home. Okay, that's last week covered. Now we're gonna go and find that King Ida. A lot of the waterfowl that we saw were taking shelter within bays close to the shore. Birds that we'd already seen, like this mute swan. Some mallards. This golden eye. Some buffleheads, long-tailed ducks, more buffleheads. Close to the shore on the lakeside, the wind was absolutely fierce, but these gulls, well, they seem to be enjoying the wind. We looked west over Lake Ontario when Sarah suddenly spotted the female King Ida. Well, since it's a female, should it be a queen? It was a struggle to keep my camera steady in the wind, but I got some shaky distant footage of her. She's a lifer and she was definitely worth the trip. I'd love to see a male King Ida one day, such an elaborate looking creature. King Idas are sea ducks that spend the spring and summer in the Arctic where they breed, but they come further south in the fall and the winter where there is more ice around. They generally don't come very far inland, which is why this individual is quite a rarity. Since we had spent most of the morning exposed to the wind and the elements, we decided to turn back. 
We did see a few more ducks, including good looks at some gadwall. And then further inside the park and more sheltered, we saw a few perching birds. Nothing too spectacular, but we saw some robins. We also saw chickadees, American tree sparrows, and lots of European starlings like this one, which is another new bird. Hey, doesn't matter, they all count. Okay, really pleased to have seen the King Ida. It's a lifer, also a new bird for the year, obviously. Um, conditions not great here, not too many other birds around. It snowed last night, 10 to 15 centimeters of snow, although most of it has melted, it is still quite windy. So that's us for today, but stay tuned to this video. We're gonna go birding again tomorrow and see if we can add anything else to our list. See if we can catch up a bit to last year. We'll be back after this, so stay tuned. From the base of the bridge, yeah. one, two, three. Remember this western grebe from episode one? Back then, we didn't count the birds because the footage is a bit on the dodgy side, but we've had a change of heart. Without getting too technical, zoomed in footage from our released videos often looks better than the original footage. So having watched our own video back, we feel more certain about this bird now. Also, several viewers commented to say they thought it was clearly a western grebe. Thanks to all of you who commented, by the way. So, we're counting this western grebe. It isn't a lifer. We saw one in California last year, but it is a new bird for the 300 bird challenge. Right, moving on to Sunday the 14th of January. Good early morning everyone, we're back and we're at Downsview Park. It's freezing cold and windy again, there's been more snow. It's minus five this morning with a feels like temperature of minus 13, so we're wrapped up and trying to keep warm. Anyway, Downsview Park, because we want to try to find a few more perching birds, there's still quite a few of those that we haven't seen yet. Even some silly ones like, for example, Blue Jay, we haven't seen one of those yet. So just gonna take a quick walk around here and see if we can add anything. This is supposed to also be a good spot for hawks, so we'll see if we can find any of those too. Guys, I'm going to stop going on about this broken lens soon, I promise. But as I mentioned before, we are a bit further behind than we, than we would like to be. We're into the 30s at the moment in 2024. But Sarah, where were we in 2023 around this time of year? Just over 50. Yeah, just into the 50s. So actually, I'll dig into that and I'll show a chart on the screen to kind of illustrate where we are versus last year and how we need to try to catch up a little bit if we can. This red line shows our sightings from 2023, and as you can see, we really pushed on and had a good first half of the month. This blue line is our current 2024 300 bird challenge, up as far as the start of today. And as you can see, we've been flatlining for a while, partly because of the lens issue, partly just because we haven't been able to get out as much as we did last year. It's not a crisis yet, hopefully we will catch up. Anyway, on with the show. We took a walk around a few different habitats at Downsview Park, but to be honest, it was pretty quiet this morning. We did see several red-tailed hawks surveying the area on the hunt for any hapless prey. And once again, we came across some of the more common species we've already seen this year, like this cardinal, as well as juncos, chickadees, robins, American tree sparrows, but also our first white-throated sparrow of the year. This one was eating some sumac, one of the few plant foods around at this time of year. I get the impression birds only eat it because they don't really have much other choice. I don't think it comes near the top of their come dine with me menu list, to be honest. Okay guys, Ooh, you can see my breath. We've taken shelter in the car. We're gonna move on to a different location. Still trying to pursue a few perching birds, but we may also look for some ducks later today. We'll see how it goes. We're gonna head east all the way across the north side of the city along the 401 to another spot. You'll have to stay tuned to find out where it is. We'll be back in a short moment. Thankfully, we didn't encounter any more snowfall on the drive east through the northern center of the city, through Pickering, and down Lake Ridge Road into Whitby to guess where? My goodness, it's cold and it's only mid-January. It's probably gonna get worse. Sarah, where are we? Lynn Shores. 
We're going to take a walk around Lynn Shores, hopefully add some more perching birds. Starting to get worried about blue jays now, surely we'll see one of those. Stay tuned guys, we'll take a walk around this wood. As is quite typical for Lynn Shores, we were seeing common species, but you do get good looks at birds that are quite accustomed to humans. We saw this red-bellied woodpecker, more white-throated sparrows, and American tree sparrows. We also saw a downy woodpecker, chickadees, decent views of a dark-eyed junco. This rather hefty morning dove. Oh, and yes, finally, a certain blue and white bird. Yay, there's three or four blue jays flitting around over here. Before we left Lynn Shores, we did see a couple of new species. First, this American goldfinch in its dull, non-breeding winter plumage. They are, of course, bright yellow and black during the summer. And then this sparrow that I almost dismissed as being a tree or a white throat, but note the light pink beak, the black eye line, and that head pattern. This is an immature white crowned sparrow and is a little unexpected at this time of the year where it would more ordinarily be found in the North American Arctic. Okay, we just finished at Lynn Shores and drove around the corner where Cranberry Marsh can be located. Thought we'd take a look at the marsh and out on the lake, see if there's anything there. The marsh itself is frozen over and is pretty bleak and quiet. The lake, there was a raft of ducks, but it was mostly scub, which we've already seen. Goldeneye, as far as we can tell, common goldeneye. A um, couple of buffalo heads, but nothing new out there. We are going to take a bit of a punt on a sighting from two days ago, so it may not still be there, but a Ross's goose was found somewhere in the area. We're going to see if we can track that down. That would be a lifer. Um, if you watched my videos last year from England, I did say that we saw a Ross's goose, but it turns out it wasn't. It was some kind of weird white and black goose hybrid, probably a snow goose crossed with something else. So Ross's goose would be a lifer. We're going to go and take a look. Apparently it's just in some field two days ago. Chances are it's going to have flung, but stick with us. We'll take a look, take a punt on a new lifer. We'll be back in a moment, just going to make that drive now. We drove along some smaller side roads for about 15 minutes in a generally northern direction towards our tip. Basically a farmer's field where the Ross's goose and several other geese species had been seen. Nothing doing though, just an empty bleak field with blowing snow. It's likely that the change in weather, two days of heavy snowfall and freezing temperatures, had led to these birds moving on. So we did the same thing and moved on back towards the east end of Toronto. Time for one more stop. Hi everyone, we left the area where the Ross's goose was seen, bit of a bust, very bleak and snowy there. We've driven back towards Toronto. We're in the east end at Bluffers Park. We're gonna check out the marina here, see if there's any more waterfowl. Sarah, what's been reported here? Northern shovelers. Yeah, let's just see if we can add some northern shovelers or perhaps anything else to our list. Let's go take a look. So we have the boat launch here and the lake over this way. But all we're really seeing is uh, mallards, Canada geese, ring-billed gulls, buffalo heads. I think that's it. Um, there's a marina over this way, so we're going to go take a look at that now. Everything seemed to be quietening down. The marina presented us with nothing but ring-billed gulls, although we did see these pigeons in the car park. It counts, it's a bird, maybe not the most exciting one we'll see this year, but this next bird is exciting. Okay guys, the cold and the wind continues. It will actually get colder here before it gets warmer. However, it's the wind in this part of the world that gets you, so the wind chill's really quite stark at the moment, so I think that's us done. Unfortunately, no northern shoveler, but I'm sure that bird will turn up many times through the year. Um, you had a near miss with a Cooper's Hawk, we think, as well, but I wasn't able to get the camera on it back at one of our previous stops, so that doesn't count yet, but I'm sure, again, we'll see that. Now, the one thing that we did see that we haven't told you about so far, but I'm sure is in the video title and such, is the long-eared owl. We actually saw several of them. 
Unfortunately, because it's a little bit vulnerable and people kind of flock to locations where there's owls, I can't say where we saw it, but we did see it at some point today. And we'll close out this video with footage of that owl. Okay everyone, thanks for watching this video. We're still a little bit behind on where we would like to be and behind on last year as well, but I think there'll be opportunities for us to catch up. There better be. Thank you all for watching this video. Please do the usual nice things that really help us out. If you could please like the video, that will help other people find the channel. If you could please subscribe if you're not already, really appreciate that. We're getting close to a thousand. That's something we really want to aim for in the next couple of months if possible. So yeah, if you could please hit that red subscribe button, really appreciate that. Once more, thanks for watching. Happy birding. See you soon.